Simply put, the Karpovs and DC Solar ran a classic Ponzi scheme with a twist. One of the victims, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, lost $340 million. The owners of DC Solar pleaded guilty today to what's being called the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of the Eastern District of California. It's 2008. The Great Recession is at its height. WikiLeaks just got shut down by the federal government. Georgia just declared war on Russia. Senator Barack Obama was elected president. And 38-year-old Wyoming tech graduate Jeff Karpoff just struck intellectual gold. But to properly understand how we got to this situation, let's take a step back. The Martinez native had spent the past two decades gathering information in the green energy and automotive industries. Founding his first company, Roverland USA, in his hometown shortly after graduation, Jeff was quite the savvy entrepreneur. Specializing in Land Rover and Jaguar vehicles, Jeff's automotive business quickly grew to be one of the largest certified independent repair facilities in the country. After years of building his first business, Jeff was able to sell his company for a fair but undisclosed price in 2006. The sale didn't just make Jeff one of the richest people in his town, but opened the door for him to pursue a new career path, which he found shortly after the sale. Leaving the automotive industry, Jeff found himself running the West Coast Green Power Company. The company was in desperate need of a new president and CEO for their Martinez-based operations, and multi-millionaire slash accomplished entrepreneur Jeff Karpoff seemed like the perfect fit. During his time at West Coast, Jeff would file patents for the world's first commercial mobile solar panel, the Solar Eclipse. Using the money he had earned from the sale of Roverland USA, Jeff would leave the West Coast Power Company and start DC Solar Solutions Incorporated, the world's first commercial mobile solar panel supplier, then based in Concord, California. Over the next three years, Jeff would construct the company's first prototype designs and travel the world seeking out interested investors and potential customers. By 2012, the now Benicia-based solar company was one of the fastest growing companies in the state of California, attracting companies such as AT&T, T-Mobile, Disney, ChargePoint, and even the organizers of the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. Jeff and his wife, co-owner Paulette Karpoff, were living the American dream. Coming from a small town of less than 30,000 people, with little to no pre-existing wealth, the Karpoffs were quickly able to become one of the richest families in the Bay Area. As their business only continued to expand, so did their clientele. With hefty financial backing secured, the billion dollar company began to invest its revenue in some physical assets. The company soon became the proud owner of a minor league baseball team based in Karpoff's hometown, the Martinez Clippers, named after the famous New York Yankee player Joe DiMaggio, nicknamed the Yankee Clipper, who was born and raised in the town of Martinez. In addition to their baseball team, DC Solar also sponsored NASCAR drivers Kyle Larson and Rose Chastian, who were up-and-coming race car drivers that participated in events such as the Second Tier Xfinity Series and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. But right as DC Solar was at its height, it all began to fall apart. In 2018, an FBI investigation into the corporation began to unravel the secrets within DC Solar's internal operations. For years, the company that Jeff had been running was nothing more than another asset in his ever-expanding collection, all sheltered under the holding company, Double Jump, which owned 100% of all DC Solar stock, as well as its subsidiaries, DC Solar Solutions, DC Solar Distribution, and DC Solar Freedom. Jeff had used these companies to attract the attention of 17 wealthy investors, including Berkshire Hathaway's Warren Buffett, who contributed a jaw-dropping $340 million to the organization, with the promise that his contribution would qualify for a federal solar tax credit. With the newly acquired funds, Karpoff would go on to lease over 17,000 mobile solar units to a variety of well-known organizations, 
including NASCAR, the California State University system, and the previously mentioned interested party. Though DC Solar had nearly a billion dollars in financial backing to create the mobile solar panels, as little as one-fourth of the promised 17,000 units were ever actually constructed. The remaining funds were used to pay off Jeff Karpoff's amassing debt and to continue to feed into his luxurious lifestyle. The FBI's investigation into Karpoff's solar company was enough to cause DC Solar's bankruptcy in 2018 and the reclamation of Karpoff's assets by 2019. Jeff's spending habits were so unpredictable that by the time of the raid, he had purchased 148 vintage luxury vehicles, including Burt Reynolds' 1978 Firebird worth an estimated $8.233 million and Kyle Larson's first place prize winning car that was used in the 2018 Coca-Cola Firecracker 250. Additionally, Jeff had purchased luxury real estate in California, Nevada, the Caribbeans, and Mexico, as well as subscriptions to a private jet service and his own private suite at an undisclosed NFL stadium. All in addition to the previously mentioned minor league team and NASCAR sponsorship. By the time of the company's liquidation, the Karpoffs were indebted to over 100 individual creditors, with the 20 largest creditors all being related to Jeff's NASCAR endeavor. Though not every creditor is public, some notable ones include Chip Ganassi Racing, owed $4.31 million, International Speedway Corporation, owed $1.025 million, Exide, owed $2,031,000, $653.68. U.S. Tower Corporation, owed $2,059,979.11. AT&T, owed $105,721.61. ChargePoint, owed $585,330.76. And an estimated $9,680,750 in equipment rental and leasing fees that were tracked back to the address of DC Solar. In January of 2020, an estimated $120 million worth of assets were seized from the Karpoffs and liquidized to pay off DC Solar's debts. On the 24th of that same month, Jeff and his partner Paulette pled guilty to conspiracy to commit fraud and money laundering. The DC Solar saga finally began its final chapter when Jeff was sentenced to 30 years in prison on November 9th, 2021, while Paulette was sentenced to only 11 years on June 28th, 2022. In addition to the Karpoff family, Joseph W. Bayless was sentenced to three years in prison and ordered to pay $481.3 million in restitution on November 6, 2021. And DC Solar CFO Robert A. Carman was sentenced to six years in prison and ordered to pay $624 million in restitution on April 12, 2022, soon followed by DC Solar employee Alan Hansen, who was sentenced on May 31, 2022, and ordered to serve eight years in prison and pay $619 million in restitution. As of now, only Ryan Guidry and Ronald J. Roach still await trial. Their trials are scheduled for July 26, 2022 and September 13, 2022, respectively. And with that, we wait for the DC Solar Saga to finally be concluded. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more videos by me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that gray bell icon to be notified of any future videos. Until then, thanks for watching.